Hey, what's up everybody? Chicago Gooner here, bringing you another Arsenal talk. Just doing a little um, Emirates Cup review over the weekend. You know, it was, it was great to see the Arsenal play at home, you know, for the first time, or for the first time this preseason. You know, it's good to see them black, back in the uh, red and white, playing at home, playing at the Emirates, playing in front of all the fans. And, you know, it was just great to see. It was great to see all the guys playing out there and seeing seeing guys get uh, opportunities as well um, you know the Emirates Cup is always kind of difficult to uh, balance out just because it's you know it's back-to-back -back games back-to-back uh, -back days so it's always kind of difficult to put uh, a squad together that's going to gel and and play as one and I thought all in all it was uh, it was a great weekend um, and I'll get into the Monaco mishap in a little bit, but uh, you know, going over the uh, Benfica game, you know, I, I, you know, I was, I was expecting a little bit more from uh, Benfica, to be honest with you. Um, when you think about uh, Benfica, you know, they're a Portuguese league uh, champions last year. Uh, over the last two years, they've made the Europa League uh, final, um, but you know, I'm not sure what that Europa League thing is. I don't. I don't know if Arsenal really remembers what that is. So, but um, yeah, but I was expecting a lot more from them uh, from that game, and just Arsenal just you know dominated uh, just to the point where you know going into the second half they pretty much just said, okay, let's call off the dogs and uh, let's just you know play our game, but you know let's try not to score and embarrass them even further. Um, you know the five-one score line, you know four-four nil. At halftime, uh, of course, Yaya Sinogo finally getting his first goal as an Arsenal player. Of course, it's just a friendly, but uh, getting that first goal is always the most difficult thing to do. Um, you know, you can ask, uh, you know, Terry Henry, you can ask like Dennis Bergkamp, where you know they had tr problems scoring. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to compare Yaya Sinogo to them, but you know, when uh, you know we're giving criticism to Yaya Sinogo for not scoring and. And you know he's just he's just been unlucky in my opinion too, um, as far as uh, you know his last year. You know he kind of got thrown into the fire as a as a 20, 20 year old, not really uh, used to the uh, you know the physicality and the speed of uh, the Premier League. But he handled it well last season, and you know he was one of the main contributors in the FA Cup final that uh, really pushed us over the edge to really uh, start giving us a an edge. But it was nice to see him score. Um, it was nice to see him, uh, you know, really uh, get into the game, you know, make a nuisance of himself, making good runs. Um, you know, his finishing uh, was great as well. Um, you know, the passing, the fluidity of yesterday's game was, was really nice. Um, you know, of course, Joel Campbell too. God, what a, you know, what a player that guy is going to be. Uh, in my opinion, he's just going to be, fun to watch over the next you know several years uh, it was great to see him score I mean his goal was all class I mean the technique on it was just perfect uh, lined it up well got it on his favorite left foot and just you know he just smashed it home and you know that's a difficult that's a very difficult uh, finish uh, when you just keep on looking at the replay over and over again it's very difficult to finish like that uh, you'll see even some of the best players in the world fluff that um, but you know he kept his composure, he kept his control, he kept focused, and you know he slammed it home, and it was great. And of course he uh, assisted one of uh, Yaya Sonogo's goals as well. Uh, you know which is, um, you know you could take that uh, as him being unselfish to where he, you know he's ready to be that player for Arsenal. Because uh, if you look at Arsenal, you know ever since Wenger you know came into the club, it's just been you know unselfish play from even some of our best players you know, over the years, and, um, you know, that's what, you know, Wenger looks for, too, is, um, you know, don't take a shot on goal, and let, you know, if, unless you, unless you have something wide open, and, you know, Sonogo was just basically there, made a good run, uh, just waiting on the ball, and, you know, finished it out, and, you know, it was just, it was just great to see, the other great thing to hear, especially after the game, was um, Arsene Wenger's saying, uh, Joel Campbell will not be sold. He will not be going out on loan. He'll be staying with us, uh, which is great to hear. It's great news. I think it'll. I think that's uh, even after uh, having a game like that, 
um, against Benfica for Joel Campbell to hear that from your manager and having uh, that kind of confidence that um, he's not going to go out on loan. So now he can, you know, kind of, um, you know, he probably knew maybe even before that, but, um, you know, it's great to see him, see Wenger come out in the press and say that, you know, that just gives an, a lift to uh, a player that uh, his manager has enough confidence in him uh, to be, uh, to stay with the club. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, Oxley Chamberlain said before the game, uh, he even said that uh, all the new signings have really given uh, the players a lift, really give the club a lift. And you know, Joel Campbell is ex- he's exact. I mean, he's a new signing almost. Uh, you know, he's never played with the first team. Uh, he's been out on loan for you know basically the last three years, and you know he's never really had his opportunity. And you know, he's like a new signing. And um, you know, I think we all kind of. Uh, agree in some ways that uh, we needed to go out and get maybe a, possibly another winner, another striker, and, um, you know, having Joel Campbell come into the side and, and playing with us, you know, I don't think we need it. I, I honestly don't think we need it. Uh, he can be that third striker, second striker. Uh, you know, he can be that backup winner as well because he played on the left side yesterday. And, um, you know, he can be that, that versatility guy, you know, that's what Wenger loves the most is are, are those guys who are just so versatile um, where they could play multiple positions and um, you know it's just great to see I you know I hope he stays with the club I think he's you know it's just my opinion I just the kid's gonna be a player I think uh, he's I think he's gonna do great things with the club um, he obviously loves the club and he wants to be here um, which is another great thing you know there's you know there's some players even when they come off of a uh, World Cup or maybe like the Euros or something, you know, they start thinking too highly of themselves. And, um, you know, they, they feel like, well, maybe I need something else or something better. I need first team football. Um, and Joel Campbell hasn't said any of that. He just, you know, he wants a chance. You know, that's what he's been saying on Twitter, uh, that he just wants his chance. He wants a chance at his dream. And obviously his dream is to play with Arsenal. So, you know, it's really great to, uh, as an overall thing. Um, going into the Monaco game, um, you know, not much to say. Um, I'll get into a little bit of Colin Chambers here. Uh, that guy is a steal. That guy, I mean, we only paid, what was it, about 16 million pounds. Uh, you know, you look at uh, Manchester United and they paid 30 million pounds for Luke Shaw, um, which I don't, I have no doubts that Luke Shaw has great potential and stuff, but wow, watching Colin Chambers at center half, um, yeah, we we basically took uh, Southampton to the cleaners, and thank you very much for for him because that kid looks great. Um, you know, I know I'm putting just a little bit too much into it, but you know, if you really watch him, if you really watch his movement, his his uh, his touch on the ball, his his passing ability, his his recognition too. I mean, his recognition, especially in this Monaco game, was pretty is pretty good. Um, you know, watching him over the weekend, it's just. Um, yeah, he is an absolute steal, and he's the he's the future um, for this club as far as center half goes. And I really hope that you know Wenger you know keeps him there. Uh, of course, he you know, like like everybody else, like I just said about uh, like Joel Campbell, he's very versatile. That he can play out on the right back just in case if Dubuji gets hurt, or um, you know I I would I would guess that with Jenkinson um, going out on loan. Uh, to West Ham, I would almost think that maybe Berlin is going to be the backup right back, or you know they're just going to keep uh, Chambers on uh, the bench as the backup center half, backup right back uh, for the season. But um, you know overall, he he looked great. Uh, I'm very impressed. Um, not remembering of uh, seeing him last year, <clears throat> or really you know hearing his name too much, or really standing out. Um, you know watching him to you know this weekend was just. Um, you know, is is a breath of fresh air that uh, you know we're still going out there and we're still you know identifying those that young talent and you know I think you know the potential like everybody says potential is sky's the limit for Colm Chambers and you know I can't wait to see that kid grow within the system and and learn under you know guys like Murtasacker and Kashoni and you know become another great center half of uh, something that you know Arsenal kind of lacked. Um, you know, especially after all the Invincibles left and stuff that, you know, we just didn't have that monster, um, 
uh, center half. Um, you know, and I think you know, I think Chambers can be that guy, that next uh, that next great center half for Arsenal. Uh, going into more a little bit of the game, Alexi Sanchez, of course, uh, finally made his debut against Benfica. Uh, the ovation was great. Um, you know, didn't get much playing time, but uh, you know, in this game, he he got a lot of playing time. Uh, played on the right side, also played up top. And uh, talking more about uh, him playing up top, um, yes, I I would love to see him get a lot more time. Um, up top as striker um, you know when he moved into that striker role you could see the difference in like the tempo that we had in the second half uh, you can see the different uh, runs that he was making um, the you know the ball control that he has the ability to um, you know control the ball uh, you know hold up play a little bit so that uh, uh, other players can make runs and um, you know, I like what I saw. I, I definitely like what I saw from uh, Alexi Sanchez as a striker uh, for Arsenal. And, you know, once those guys get back up in the form, uh, I know some people, of course, were complaining about Giroud. And, you know, it's just like, oh, give me, you know, give me a break. You know, the, you know, the guy's not match fit. He, this is his first game back um, since the World Cup. Uh, he just came back this week, um, actually, to start training with the squad. And, you know, he looks rusty, you know. You know, even even Debushi looked a little rusty. Uh, he made some good plays, of course, but you know he looked rusty. Um, you know that's what's going to happen. You know, Kashoni, you know he 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 pretty much fluffed the uh, set piece that uh, Monaco had to get uh, Falcao free for uh, that header that won the game for him. But you know this is their first game back. You know there's no need to uh, start calling people out and say, well, this is why he shouldn't play. Well, it's, it's preseason one. Number two, it's his first game back. Number three, he's not match fit and he's just starting to get his legs back under him. You know, it's going to take up until next weekend, uh, to really get his legs back and get his fitness back up. And then it's probably going to take up until, uh, you know, the opening game of the season to, um, you know, to, to get match fit. So, you know, to, you know, the criticism on him is, it's like, come on, give me a break, you know. But it was nice to see him back out there. It was nice to see Debushi and, of course, Sanchez playing. Um, of course, Ospina was uh, hurt. I guess he had some type of uh, thigh injury, I, I guess. Um, but it was nice to see all the new signings on the field, uh, with the exception of Ospina. Um, so it was great to see. But, uh, and of course, you know, <laughs> um, the play, I mean, the FA, I wish they would do something about these referees. Um, you know, at first, Atkinson called it for a penalty, and then he got overruled by the fucking side judge. Are you the head referee, or are you the? Are you just, I mean, it was just ridiculous. It was a yard and a half inside the box that Akpom got tripped by the goalkeeper. And it was still outside the box. You know, I don't know how much further you need to be inside the box to be called that a penalty. And then they were trying to consider him if he was onside or not. He was way onside because the, what was it, what would it be, the left back was keeping him onside. He was still at least a half a yard onside, and that's that's by a mile in terms of, of professional football. And it was just, oh, my God. You know, it's, you know, kind of almost, uh, you know, I almost had flashbacks of the FA Cup final where we had where we had at least two penalties. And, and you know, uh, an argument can be made for a third penalty in that game that was never given. And this is the FA. You know, this is what the FA does to Arsenal uh, on, you know, almost a game-to-game basis where they just keep on fucking us. And it, it's it's making me sick. It's just making me, you know, what if what if that was a cup final? What if this game really meant something? What if this was a, um, a you know, a last week of the season, and you know, we needed a, we just needed a draw to win the league. But of course, we lose a game and then we lose a league over something stupid like that when it was completely fucking obvious. And of course, nothing will happen to the referees at all. Uh, the, even announcers are saying, we're, well, they're in preseason form. No, that's, that's mid-season form for FA referees. Uh, they're some of the worst in, in, in the world. They're some of the worst in Europe. And, you know, I wish, uh, you know, the clubs 
would start stepping up and just saying, you know what, these guys need to be uh, held accountable for their actions. They need to be held accountable for uh, what they do run on the pitch. But because nothing else, nothing seems to be done about it. Uh, they don't seem to be suspended. They don't seem to be fined. We don't know what happens to them because it's not released in the press, which it should be. And you know, it just pisses me off that you know, what if that was a key game that could you know change our fortune, or you know, what if it was, that was a cup uh, like a uh, a cup final? And something like that happened because we saw enough of that uh, in the FA Cup final. And of course, they fluffed it again and they fucked up again. And it just seems all too normal over the last, you know, five, six years uh, that the FA Cup or the, the FA refs are just, you know, it's just one mistake after another, after another, after another. And, you know, they start, they need to be held accountable. They need to start, I think clubs, I think, uh, really need to start speaking out about it. And they really need to be. You know, hold the FA accountable as well. But uh, as far as as far as that, other than that, you know, there wasn't uh, you know that much to really talk about the game. We had a lot of possession. We could we basically controlled the game. We just couldn't uh, get any in the back of the net. You know, Jack Wilshire had had a couple opportunities that he couldn't put home. But you know, the goalkeeper did make some make some really good saves. So credit to the Monaco goalkeeper. Um, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from because those were some good saves. But, um, you know, the team looks, you know, as it's progressing into the preseason, of course, you know, I'm still a little bit on edge of how uh, well we're going to look. Um, you know, I'm not so much worried about the uh, Crystal Palace game. I'm more worried about the um, the Champions League uh, tie. That's, you know, basically on that, I think, either that Tuesday or Wednesday, right after, uh, you know, we play uh, Crystal Palace. You know, that's when we need to start firing on all cylinders uh, for that so we can get into the uh, Champions League group stage. And I think that draw is coming out very soon, I believe. I think maybe, uh, I could be wrong on this, but I think it's somewhere around like August 6th or 8th uh, when the draw happens. So we'll know who we, who we will play uh, in that, in that uh, Champions League playoff tie, uh, which will be good to see. And hopefully we get a good draw, you know. Of course, everybody wants a good draw. Everybody wants a more of an easier game <clears throat> to push us through. Um, I think out of all the teams that are in the playoffs, I, you know, again, I think we're the best team, of course, um, that has to play a playoff game to get into the group stage. But, you know, hopefully it's a good draw. But all in all, again, you know, it was just great to see the team again. Uh, we're going to have, the, of course, the uh, Community Shield next week, which will be interesting uh, to see uh, – who even like Manchester City will pull out there? I know some clubs are even extending. Um, I guess uh, RVPs being extended by one week uh, for more of a uh, layoff time, for more uh, rest time for him. So it's going to be kind of interesting of how you know once the Germans come back the day after the Community Shield of how you know Wenger's going to really handle them and. Uh, and how he's going to, you know, get them back into the side and, you know, if they'll even play against Crystal Palace. Um, you know, I, I, I almost I almost assume that, you know, Ozil will probably come in maybe as a as a sub. Maybe even Murtisacker might come in as a sub if we have the game in hand, hopefully, uh, at some point, you know, late in the match or something, just so we can get them uh, some minutes in, a, in an actual game. Um, but... Uh, um, all in all, that's 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 basically about it. You know, it was a good weekend. Great to see the Arsenal play, and um, you know, maybe on a little bit of transfer thing. There's not much going on, but uh, the only kind of news that we're hearing right now is that uh, Thomas Vermarlin might go to Barcelona, which I rather see him uh, go to Barcelona rather than Manchester United. Um, you know, there's there needs to be some type of uh, uh, silent rule. Among the club that we need to stop uh, selling our players to rival teams, uh, especially the bigger rival teams. You know, if you want to sell out a player to maybe a bottom half team that just doesn't make it or just doesn't have a chance at Arsenal, uh, then that's fine. I don't really don't care about that. But you know, when you're selling players to you know Manchester United, Manchester City, uh, Chelsea, uh, you know, possibly you can throw Liverpool in there now. Um, you know, you just you just don't want to see it. And it needs to end at some point. And, but overall, I think that'll be a better move for uh, for Mollen because, you know, he'll have Champions League football there at Barcelona. They're a better side, obviously. Um, 
you know, he he might even get into the he might even get into the starting eleven because uh, that starting you know that back four those two center halves I think PK was really um, <clears throat> he was really called out this during this World Cup of how um, maybe a little bit overrated for PK. Um, you know, Ramos was doing a lot of running, uh, tracking back because PK just got too far forward sometimes and. Um, yeah, I think uh, just a little bit overrated, so he might get into that side. Um, so, but it'll, it'll be a good, it'll be a good fit for him. I think it'll be uh, beneficial to him. He'll go to another great, you know, another great team, another great club. That's, uh, you know, he can have, he can play some first team football, and hopefully he can get into the side there. It's supposed to be for 10 million pounds supposedly, which uh, seems like a decent number. Uh, I heard Manchester United were offering uh, somewhere around 12 or 14. Uh, which I think is a kind of like a joke, but you know if 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 it takes to take less money to send them to Barcelona, so be it. Um, again, you know, don't want to sell players to uh, United or anything to help them out to try to get them back in the Champions League. You know, hopefully they kind of just stay out of that for maybe a couple of years or something. It would be nice to see because they've had a good enough run to hold them over for the next you know four or five years. Um, other than that, there's not really much else to say. Of course, you know the DM spot is a uh, you know it is a necessity. Um, you know, there's a couple times in the Benfica game, a couple times in the Monaco game where, you know, that middle of that park was just you know it was open, and you know I think if God if we add that DM that we desperately need. Um, you know, I just you know, may, of course, I'm going to be biased a little bit, but you know, I think we can really win the league uh, if we get that monster DM right in the middle of that park. That's going to just help out that back four and solidify that back four. And and honestly, I think um, Wenger knows that. Um, of course, in a news conference this week, um, he denied reports for uh, that Colombian playmaker that's on Porto. But uh, when asked about Kadira, he said nothing about it. He just basically said, said silent. He didn't comment on it. He just said, you know, he just basically kind of did what Wenger did and kind of just shook his head and didn't really mention anything about Kadira. So um, hopefully that's still in play, of course. But, I mean, uh, of course, you obviously know my choice is, is getting the carve a hole but from uh, Sporting Lisbon. I think he would just be a monster. Uh, he would be also another great future uh, player, you know, to go along with a guy like uh, Chambers and whatnot. Um, so hopefully we pick that guy up. It doesn't, you know, if Kadir is in play, of course, I don't, I almost kind of think that's going to happen next week because, you know, if he has the same time amount of time off as our Germans, then uh, it's possible that, you know, the deal won't get done until next weekend or so, um, or when the Germans are due back. So, Hopefully that'll that'll happen or something will happen. <laughs> so it looks like it. Uh, Finger even said that there's a possibility of two more players coming in, which one of them will be a DM and the other will be a uh, center half. So hopefully we keep beefing up. Hopefully we keep on getting great players into the club that'll help us uh, push forward, win more trophies, uh, and just be happy about it. So, but uh, that'll be it for today and. Um, you know, maybe if anything comes up during a week, I'll do another Arsenal talk. But uh, probably expect one next week after the Community Shield. And hopefully we beat Manchester City to get our first trophy of the season and and uh, start pushing on to bigger and better things.